what's up y'all it's your man alex and uh i got something a little special i guess it's special depending on how you look at it but uh i was thinking of maybe like a top 10 list i can do and then i got to thinking uh i could do a list of 10 memorable experiences that i've had in the horror genre uh since i've been watching horror movies you know i've, I've been watching horror movies since I was tiny and there's been a lot of things uh, this happened within the horror genre whether it be movies games TV uh, a lot of things I've had a lot of experiences uh, in the horror genre so I figure I'll give you 10 memorable experiences that I've had well actually 12 uh, when I came up with this list I mean, there's so many experiences, and the first 10 things that came across my mind, I wrote down, and that's what I'm going to do, but it's really 12, because when I wrote down number 10, two more popped up in my head, so uh, it's going to be uh, 12 memorable experiences within the horror genre. Now, this isn't going to be like a countdown, like uh, least favorite to favorite, this is just going to be random if anything it'll be in the or like in the order that i experienced it so there's not a least favorite to favorite they're all equal this is just 12 things 12 memorable experiences that i've had uh with horror for the horror genre <coughs> growing up in the house that i did uh watching all the classics uh my dad would always be playing the classics i mean the universal monsters frankenstein dracula wolfman mummy phantom of the opera uh uh who did i miss creature from the black lagoon uh, the invisible man he always played all of these movies you know the old classic monster movies and uh that was just a fun experience you know that kind of set like the foundation growing up watching those movies and uh you know it's kind of what's happening to my daughter right now you know my dad brings over you know frankenstein and uh the monsters he like you know as soon as my daughter sees a picture of frankenstein frankie frankie but uh yeah you know growing up in the house watching those old classics and uh my dad always used to watch the Hammer movies too, like Hammer, uh, like uh, Christopher Lee, Dracula, and you had Peter Cushing, and all of that stuff, and uh, just, you know, fun times. Uh, a memorable experience was a VHS tape that my dad had got, uh, the making of Michael Jackson's Thriller. Now, I used to watch this tape all the time. I mean, uh, to see how the video was made and to see Rick Baker doing the special effects makeup, uh, turning Michael Jackson into the cat monster and doing makeup for all these zombies. And it was just, I just thought it was the most awesome thing. And I used to, I used to want to, you know, do that stuff, you know, be a special effects makeup artist when I was little. Uh, that dream never came true because I'm a stupid idiot and uh, I dream too much instead of doing. So, uh, the making of Michael Jackson's Thriller uh, VHS tape was a memorable experience uh, in the horror genre. Something I thought was real cool. The Halloween theme music. Uh, that Carpenter score is like one of the scariest pieces of music ever. And, you know, it used to freak me out. And, um, you know, the intro to the movie and you see the, the jack-o'-lantern and you hear that music. You know, it used to be a thing where every time I saw a jack-o'-lantern, I would think of that music. Uh, Halloween theme is probably one of my favorite um, pieces of music, um, I just think the score is just 
beyond words. Uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I've seen the first movie when I was real young and it scared the crap out of me so bad. It made me immune to scary movies. I've said that before in other videos. You know, I became this huge fan of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, you see stuff in the background. And uh, it was just fun to experience when those movies were coming out. I mean, I've seen part three at the drive-in. Part four was the very first one that I actually seen in a movie theater. And that was like big when that came out. Um, you know, Freddy Krueger was like a household name and, you know, had a TV show and uh, costumes everywhere. I, I dressed up as Freddy Krueger at school one time for a Halloween or for a costume contest and won. Um, I remember making a Freddy glove out of a, uh, a winter glove and sticking nails through the fingers so that they'd come out the end and make my own Freddy glove. And I used to have a a Freddy mask that got tore up. <laughs> but uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was, you know, a big thing to me back in the day, uh, back in the 80s. It, it seemed like one came out every year. And uh, just a fun, fun time. And Nightmare on Elm Street, my favorite franchise. And I enjoyed growing up watching those movies. Now that Grandma has left the room, let's take a look at the old Evil Dead barf meter. This is the Paint the Room Red Vomit Champion of the 1980s, and as you can see, it's off the scale. You might want to go get a few hefty bags while there's still time. In other words, it's a classic. It follows the Joe Bob Briggs ultimate test of a splatter flick. Anybody can die at any moment. <laughs> Me and my dad watching Joe Bob Briggs drive-in theater. Uh... That was fun. I, I can't even remember what channel they used to come on. It was like the movie channel or USA or something. I can't remember, but Joe Bob Briggs used to play these like cheesy horror movies late at night. Coming up, Frankenhooker. If you hadn't seen this one, where you been? It's so disgusting that the MPAA ratings board wanted to rate it S for shit. Uh, me and my dad was always watching them, and it was that that was a fun experience. And I wish they had shows like that on now, and they don't. Uh, Joe Bob Bridge Driving Theater. I mean, dude was funny, man. Zombie cannibal hillbillies. We invented those in this country. We should be proud of this. I, I liked him a lot, and uh, I missed them days, man. I miss him and Rhonda up all night. Hi, it's Rhonda, and I've lost my head over tonight's two tantalizing movies here on USA Up All Night. There comes a point in a young boy's life when he goes through like puberty and all this stuff, or he starts to notice girls and things about girls. And he gets curious about stuff. Let's just say Linnea Quigley was there. Specifically in Night of the Demons. And, you know, Return of the Living Dead. But Lin I don't even think I should go on with this. But Linnea Quigley was there when I was going through that growing up stage. You know what I mean? Stop staring at me. Friday 13th series. Um, now, Friday 13th, like Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, used to come out. It seemed like a Friday the 13th movie was coming out every year. And that was a spun, uh, a spun. That was a fun experience, you know, to uh, watch the Jason movies. And, uh... Um, seeing part seven at the drive-in, Jason was a big deal, and Jason, you know, if if Freddy wasn't around, and Jason would be my number one favorite slasher. Uh, it, it was just fun watching those movies and experiencing that stuff. And uh, 
Friday the thirteenth was a fun experience. Uh, it would be my second favorite horror franchise right after Elm Street. Uh, Jason was a big deal, I thought, back in the day. Seeing Jason on Arsenio Hall show. Starting today, you can see him in Friday the 13th, Part 8. Jason Takes Manhattan. Please welcome Jason. Tales from the Crypt, the TV show. Now I remember when Tales from the Tales from the Crypt first premiered. I remember we sat in the living room and my dad had uh, the VCR on record. He recorded it with his VCR, and uh, we sat there and watched all three of those episodes. That uh, uh, the very first episode with uh, uh, the man who was death. And then you had the second episode and all through the house with the killer Santa Claus. And then the third episode with Dig That Cat, he's real gone. With uh, Ulrich the Undying who had the, you know, the nine lives from the cat. But Tales from the Crypt, one of the most awesomest TV shows ever. And I wish they had something like that on TV now. Just an awesome show. The Crypt Keeper with all of his corny puns and jokes. Uh, fun stuff, man. Uh, one of the greatest TV shows ever, in my opinion. I love Tales from the Crypt. Uh, fun experience. <coughs> when the first Resident Evil game came out on, on PlayStation, that game scared the crap out of me, man. It was so creepy, and the music, and when you go through the door... And the music, I don't even want to attempt the music because I'll embarrass myself, but uh, that game was so freaky, man. And I just remember encountering that zombie for the first time when you come around the corner and he's chewing that person up on the floor and he turns around. You know, he starts walking at you like, oh, what button? What button to shoot? Like, oh, that was just a freaky game. And uh, beautiful game, man. Never, ever passed it, which is kind of strange. I passed all the other ones I played, but I never passed, you know, the first Resident Evil. Um, good stuff, though. Scary game. The real Ghostbusters, probably my favorite cartoon that used to come on Saturday mornings. Now, it's not like hardcore horror or anything with blood and guts and stuff like that. You know, it's based on the movie. The, you know, it's a comedy. But uh, this had a lot of horror stuff in it. I mean, it's got ghosts and monsters and times when they go to haunted houses you know it's all kinds of horror themes in this show and uh i used to watch this every saturday morning and like i said one of my favorite cartoons saturday morning cartoons uh, even used to eat the the ghostbusters cereal that they used to make and uh i really love the ghostbusters fun experience Back when Saturday morning cartoons used to be cool. Do they even have Saturday morning cartoons anymore? <coughs> the Masters of Horror uh, series. And not because I thought it was spectacular or anything, but because uh, when those were coming out on DVD, uh, before me and my wife were married, uh, we were watching those like uh, I bought one just to try it out and me and my wife 
sat there and watched it and liked it. And it seemed like every time we went out to Best Buy or some store, we would always see one of those DVDs. And we would pick them up. And we... It was like some kind of treasure hunt for us. We, we'd go out to the store and we'd try to look for these DVDs and see how many we could get. And we would sit there in front of the TV and have a marathon. And... Uh, that series was something that we bond like bonded over every time i hear the theme music you know from masters of horror the first thing that pops in my head is you know me and michelle sitting in front of the tv watching that and uh uh so uh it it was just you know it was just a nice time something you know that you know both of us were involved in you know, grabbing the show up, watching it, and sitting there on the couch or or wherever, all hugged up together, watching the show, and uh, fun stuff. Uh, some people may be like, "What?" Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Freddy versus Jason. Uh, now, I said before that. Freddy and Jason, both of those series were big in the 80s. You know, I was so into those, and you can expect one every year. And uh, those were the two horror icons in my eyes that were the biggest, the two titans. And over the years, you know, friends, you know, we'd all get together and we'd have these arguments about who could beat who up in a fight and who would win between, you know, Leatherface, Michael Myers, who would win. And Freddie and Jason was one of them arguments. And uh, and then to hear them talk about making one and it never happened and then years and years down the road uh, to actually see the trailer to Freddie versus Jason, I was pumped. I'm dead serious. I was pumped up to see the movie. Uh, when the movie came out, everybody in the theater was wearing Freddy gloves and hockey masks. And during the movie, people were cheering and yelling at the screen. And it was just a really fun experience. And uh, probably one of my favorite movie theater experiences ever. And um, to actually see these two horror icons that I grew up with actually together on screen fighting each other that was fun and it wasn't like Frankenstein versus the Wolfman where you go through a whole movie and then they fight for like 30 seconds at the end of the movie it wasn't like that at all these two were actually battling in the movie and uh I remember this lady yelling at the screen, Get him, Freddy! Get him, Freddy! And fun stuff, man. That was just fun. Uh, a lot of people hate the movie and say, Oh, that's a terrible movie. But to me, it was fun. It was a fun experience to actually see those two on screen together. So, uh, Freddy versus Jason. Now, these were 12... Uh, memorable experiences that I had with the horror genre. Uh, like I said, big fan of horror, my favorite genre, you know, since I was a tiny kid till now. And uh, these are just 12, 12 moments. There, I have more than 12, but these are the first 12 that popped up in my head that I wrote down. And, uh, who knows, maybe I'll make another video with another 12 or 10 or whatever. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching if you watched. And uh, I will see you next time. Peace. Can you say an 80s slasher? <laughs>